Hello and welcome to the online service from Nambour Anglican Parish, South East Queensland, Australia. My name is Ralph Bowles. I'm the priest in charge of this parish in the Anglican Church, Southern Queensland. This service is a brief explanation of the Christian gospel, a brief act of worship, and we pray that in listening to it and watching it, you will find encouragement in your search for God, if you're searching for God, or in your relationship with God, if you want to express faith and hope. Here is a verse from the Apostle John to open our service today. From 1 John chapter 1. This is the message we have heard from him and declare to you, God is light, in him there is no darkness at all. May God bless you today as you join your spirit with God's spirit in worship and fellowship. Right, well, we're, um, I want to talk to you about flourishing Christianity and flourishing churches and um, how we can be the light of Jesus in the world. And um, this, is a, this is a great subject. And of course, in, our, in Australia and in many places, a lot of the churches are not, don't seem to be flourishing. So um, what are we missing? What, what can we do that's different? And uh, I want to talk to you uh, today in an overview and then in the next couple of weeks in the parish, I'm going to um, um, look a bit more deeply into it. Listen to this little description about um, the early church, the first church in Jerusalem in the Pentecost season. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, says Luke, and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet together at the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favour of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. So this is this um, remarkable early church in Jerusalem when everything was just getting going. Um, and there, I want to mention three three characteristics of that first church because whenever the church has been flourishing during this down the centuries wherever in the world it starts to look a lot like that first church in Jerusalem now, I mustn't get distracted and start telling you stories but when the church is in renewal and revival it actually has it has a very kind of Pentecost feel about it I want you to notice several things about the church First of all, it's a picture of the early church, and what, what kind of pictures, what, what, is it, what are the three qualities I want to mention? First of all, it, they had a Godward orientation, all right? They were worshipping and devoted to God, they were praising God, learning, studying the Word, listening to the Apostles' teaching, praying together, joyful, and they had a divine anointing. They, they were in awe at what God was doing in their midst, wonders and signs. We're not, we don't know more detail what they were, but the manifest presence of God was there. They were seeing people healed and changed, God doing mighty things. They were a God-filled church, a God-filled church. They had a Godward orientation. That's the first uh, element of what I want to talk about. And then they had a remarkably close fellowship. It says here they were devoted themselves to fellowship, to being together, to the breaking of bread, to eating together and to prayer and it says here all the believers were together and had everything in common they sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need they can every day they continue to meet together in the temple courts now i'm not saying that sharing selling all their possessions and sharing was the way it's meant to be all the time but what um what it showed was that they were very concerned about each other and there was an outburst of generosity and of sharing needs and lives in other words, they, they, weren't, they weren't just people who came to a building and had a worship service, right? And went away. These were people that were together in a really remarkable community and a close fellowship. Mm -hmm. The third characteristic of, the, characteristic of that first church was that they had a powerful witness on the people around them, they, in the, uh, their fellow Jews in Jerusalem. It says here, um, they broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and, and enjoying the favour of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. Now, when the church flourishes, the world 
pays attention. When the church is filled with the presence of God and joy and praise and generosity and love and the power of God at work, even the unbelieving world thinks, what's going on there? What's going on there? Um, something's happening. And other people want it too. So the question for all of us as Christians is, in our experience of God, are we having something that, it, that actually people think, I would like to have that too. I would like to have what that person's got. <laughs> I'm interested. I'm interested in what God is doing. Now the stories of revivals and renewal around the world, say in many years ago in Wales and places like that and other parts of the United States, is that when this happens at church, the surrounding society gets very curious and interested and comes to see what's going on, you know. As uh, someone, I think one of the old evangelists said, that what, what we need to be is people on fire with God because everyone likes to go and watch a fire, you know. <laughs> There's a fire someone, crowds form to watch the fire, you know. So they're the three things I want to talk about this, um, in this sermon today and, and in the month to come. Now, if you think of those three things, the Godward orientation, the fellowship orientation, and the mission or the witnessing, you could think of them as the three directions or three relationships or dimensions. The upwards to God, all right? Um, inwards towards one another in a community of, of fellow disciples and outwards in our, um, in our witness to the world, in our connection and service to the world. Um, they're the three directions. And all I want to do today is make a, a fairly obvious point that for our, for, for our churches to be flourishing and for ourselves as individual Christians to be flourishing, we need to be strong in those three dimensions. Filled with God, close together with other Christians, building each other up and loving one another, and engaged in serving and witnessing to the world, having a real relationship with the world. So just let me play with that little diagram for a bit and show you what I mean. Imagine a church or a Christian where there's really good friendship and fellowship amongst the, 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 the church, and they're pretty engaged in serving the society, but relationship with God is pretty weak, you know? It's a bit flat, literally flat, like the diagram is flat. Um, and uh, not, not what you might call passionate about God, not filled with the manifest, obvious presence of God, uh, and so on. Now, at the risk of being critical of ourselves, and I'm a, I'm a lifelong Anglican, um, of uh, flourishing churches around the world, all the research indicates that flourishing churches are passionate about God, enthusiastic about God, or as you might call it, raving fans of God. Now, uh, it is a fact, a research fact, that with some exceptions, most Anglican churches around the world are not characterised by this quality. I know this because I worked with, four, with the 40% uh, of the Anglican churches in southern Queensland and the weakest characteristic coming through most of the time was the Godward orientation. And so week after week, several times a week, I met with church leaders and church members to talk about people's passion for God, people's connection to God and so on. So we need to ask ourselves this question, are we devoted to prayer? To worship? Are we filled with awe at the presence and the greatness of God and what he's done? That's the first one. So what happens if our Godward orientation is weak? With well, little praise or passion for God. We may have good community with, other, with each other and we may have connect with outsiders, but maybe there's little spiritual impact or depth. depth. If we are not God-oriented, we won't be much use to the world. Really, we won't. It's our connection to God that gives our connection to the world its power. All right, think of another way. Now look at this shaped church, or Christian, where there is a whole concern with worshipping God, but fellowship is pretty superficial and connection to the world pretty minimal. You know, we become a bit like a club for ourselves, a worshipping club. The activity we do is worshipping. All right? And, and if, our connection to God, if our connection 
to the world and to each other is weakened, we, we, our worship connection to God will not be as rich either. Think of another way. Sometimes we, we are a close fellowship. We're a bit like a club, you know. We don't have much connection with the world. We might want to, but we don't. Or we can be really very focused. Some churches are very actively engaged in community activities outside the church, but the fellowship inside the church is not as strong as it ought to be. That could be the case. Um, so my point today is, how, the, the question for us is, how can we grow closer to God and to one another and to the world? They're the three dimensions. And whatever is true of well, how the church should be needs to be true of Christians. Each one of us needs to be um, Godward oriented, close in fellowship with fellow Christians and um, having a kind of mission to be engaged with the world around us. How can each of us be stronger in these three dimensions? Now this year is a year of transition for Nambour Parish, right? And the parish leaders are now looking for my successor, the person to fill my role in the parish going forward. And so this, I thought this would be a good topic for us to think about as we, um, as, as we, as we move into this new stage of life later on in the year. So let me take a little closer look at these three qualities. Now, that little diagram, you, you've all probably can imagine that rivers, mighty rivers flowing with strength, are fed by other streams, aren't they? You know, the rain falls down in the mountains, little creeks and rivulets start forming, you know, and, um, and, and they all start and they come together. So here on my diagram, um, three streams feed the mighty river of flourishing Christianity. This is artwork by Ralph Bowles, copyright. You, you, you only use it with permission, right? Um, so um, I call these the three streams of flourishing churches and disciples. The three streams of flourishing churches and disciples. Um, so let me just go over them and I will talk about these as we go through um, next, the month, the next three sermons. Think, for example, of the, um, of the Godward dimension of worship. Now, the Godward dimension of the Christian life and of church life is much more than um, attending worship services. It's our own personal prayer and worship of God, our own uh, connection to God that we bring to church, we bring um, to the corporate praise and prayer. One of, the, one of the big things that happened when I was working with other churches years ago was when um, church people, Anglican, fellow Anglicans, realised that the quality of a church service depends on more than the sermon and the preaching and the liturgy. In fact, I would go so strong to, as far as to say the real experience of God in a church service depends upon what each person brings when they come here. I remember working with some, uh, a church where they were working on their worship services to, to there was their lowest quality thing. And, um, and uh, one of the, uh, the leaders, he was a church warden, was one of the Bible readers at church. And um, for him, he realised that in order to read the Bible properly on Sunday, he needed to study the passage during the week. And when he started studying the passage during the week, not just checking out how to read it, but actually studying it, he came up and read the Bible with a much different effect for himself and for other people. Likewise, I remember working with a, a bunch of young adults who were worship team leaders, song leaders, and they realised in the end what they were doing as a ministry to God was more than just their technical ability to play or to lead singing, but it was their own prayers and were prayer life before they came to church. That was the thing that was missing. And when they got that together, then there was a new experience coming. So vital worship as a whole life activity is the first one. And uh, I think when it says here, filled with awe at God, then I think we're getting to the stage that we're, where um, we should be. Think, for example, of the second stream of fellowship. Uh, these are our relationships with one another. Now, a church is more than a church service event. I know we, we have people who come for a church service event. That's fine. It's okay. We, it's, it's more than a worship gathering. A church is to be a community of sisters and brothers. 
it is a kind of spiritual family. Um, we're called to love one another, and that means kind of knowing each other and belonging together. Um, we mustn't mistake friendliness for friendship. You can be friendly to the people you meet in the coffee shop or in Woolies, right? But that's not friendship. It's just friendliness. I heartily endorse friendliness, um, but it's not friendship. Um, we shouldn't confuse fellowship with socialising around a weekly cup of tea. Now, it's great to socialise around a weekly cup of tea, but that's not fellowship. Fellowship is the sharing of lives, sharing Christ together. Uh, a superficial chat is not fellowship. It's nice, but it's not Christian fellowship. Um, drawing closer to one another requires real face-to-face -face re relationships. This is the reason why all the research all around the world is very clear. Flourishing churches that are growing numerically and are strong on all the other indicators are churches that put fellowship as the, as the central and basic thing they do. Small groups, gathering together, praying together, reading the Bible together, being devoted to, to being a community together, very, very important. As someone has said, disciples are grown in circles, not in rows. Lives change in the context of relationships. Uh, it's like the Pro book of Proverbs says, as iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. So that's the other stream that comes in, the fellowship stream. And then the third stream that I want to talk about, and I'll be doing these in the coming weeks, is the mission stream. Now, if, we ha if we're not missional, and can, uh, if the world is not, uh, people are not finding Christ, people are not actually becoming Christians and joining us, pretty soon the river dries up, right? The river dries up because there's no new water coming into it, no new... Um, no new uh, new believers coming in, so it's very important that we don't lose lose uh, connection to this. Um, uh, we're not in the world for our own sake. We're here to be a light for God in the darkness. Uh, miss, so mission is being sent by God to work with Him to help the world find Him. That's what it's all about. And one of the ways we f we help the world find Him is by acting and serving the world in a way that that Jesus would want us to do. You know, Jesus, when he was on mission, he, he fed the sick and set people free from their, uh, their addictions and slaveries and set them free from evil. And he taught them about, about the kingdom of God. Well, we need to do the same thing. Um, mission, therefore, is, the, is loving our neighbours and telling them about Jesus. They're, they're the two things that go together. Um, and we do this, of course, in partnership with the Holy Spirit. So we need to be uh, all the time concerned about the people uh, who, have, as it were, outside the church, you know, outside the church. Now, um, um, uh, when we're in, my, in our previous parish where I was, um, we used to, uh, we had people come to church. Some of the times they were fellow Christians joining us and wanting to join the fellowship. Other times they just turned up. Sometimes there were people seeking something. And I used to have an arrangement with Sylvia, she'll remember, that we were prepared to have people to lunch uh, at the drop of a hat. So a new family would come to church. And then I would quietly have a word to Sylvia say, can we have a family for lunch today? And she would say, yes. And then I'd go to, say, I'd go to them and say, it's great to have you with us today. If you haven't got anything organised for lunch, come and have lunch at my home, at our home. We did that many times, didn't we, Sylvia? Many times. And I, I think without an exception, those people stayed and joined our churches, our church, without an exception. And often would say to me, we remember our first day here. For one couple, one family, with mum and dad and the little girl, they'd arrived in from England the day before. They were coming to Australia to move. They came to a church on their first, the next day after they came to Australia, and we invited them to lunch. They joined the church, they're still there all these years later. So we have to be welcoming and so on. Now, when it comes to the missional stream, um, I've been a little bit dismayed in the, my time here because most of the things we've tried missionally haven't kind of worked. So I'm a bit nonplussed, but God will lead our parish to the place we can make a difference for Jesus in the world. 
And I'm hoping and praying divorce care will be that one of those ways in which we do that, uh, partners with God. So uh, we're reminded that the stream of mission is actually the work of the Holy Spirit as well. So the question I want to ask you now, and I'll be asking through the, through the month is, um, which of the three streams, the Godward orientation, the community or fellowship of the family of God, or our missional connection to the world, which of those three streams most needs to be strengthened in our lives as a parish and our lives individually? That'd be a thing. Loving God, loving one another, loving our neighbours. They're the three. Um, and uh, going forward, I've got my own opinion on this matter, but it's not what I think, it's what the parish of Nambour thinks, what you all think and resolve to what to do as we go forward to find the next priest in charge. Um, so I'm going to be talking about those three streams in the next three weeks, talking about uh, our Godward dimension of a life of worship, uh, our community as the fellowship of faith, and talking about our connection to the world. And um, that's just to give some, some guidance, if you like, or some uh, direction for the search for the next minister and asking God to bless us before then too. Let me pray. May the God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you what is pleasing in his sight, and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace, filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Christ. Amen.
Thank you for watching this video. We hope it's been of encouragement to you for your spiritual life. If you'd like what we produce here, please subscribe to this channel. That'll be a great help to our ministry. And if you want to support us financially uh, by a donation, you can do so in the link below this video. Uh, and that donation goes through our website. Thank you for watching again. And we pray that you'll be encouraged in your understanding and knowledge of God. So thank you very much for being with us.